Hey guys, today we're going to do a convolution example uh, using the graphical method. This is going to assume that you're already familiar with what convolution is um, and the mathematical kind of approach. And if you're not, Khan Academy has a pretty good um, tutorial series on how to do those. And so we're going to get straight in solving um, a convolution between these two functions here. So the formula, if you're not familiar, is this y of t, which is be your final convolved function. And that's going to be the convolution of x of tau with h of t minus tau. Or you can do it the other way and do x of t minus tau or h of tau. And it doesn't really matter. Um, but it's going to be important when we come down here because you want to um, work with the easiest function to work with. So if you're familiar with it at all, um, what we're going to do is we're going to take the two functions we want to convolve. One of them will be just our tau function, and it'll look pretty much as it is in the tau domain. And the other one will be our t minus tau function. So you say we did this one here. When we made it t minus tau, we'd put t minus tau in here. These would all become t minus tau, and it'd end up with this function being flipped in the tau domain, and it would kind of be dragged as you modified t. And so we're going to do that now um, using these two. However, we're going to make this one here h of tau, and we're going to work with x of t minus tau, just because this one's a little bit easier to drag when we do the maths. So this is our tau domain uh, plane down here, and we're going to start off by converting them here. So we'll do we'll add h of tau. Our second one's going to be the one we want to um, do here, which will be now x of t minus tau. And so we're going to add that here, and it's going to be flipped which you won't really notice a difference of with a square box, which is nice. So t will now be here. And instead of this being zero, because we're going to drag it with t, this part's now going to be t. And I suppose this is technically yeah. t minus big T. So now that we've got this set up, what we're going to do is we're going to graphically do the convolution between these two as we sort of drag this one over this one. And that'll allow us to build our y of t rather than having to go through the maths. So let's do it in a series of cases. And we're going to be looking at what t is doing. So let's treat this initial case where we've got t, which is less than 0. So our first case is t less than 0. So when you're looking at what the convolution is here, all the way up here, you've got a multiplication between the two. And so if we look down here, when t is less than 0, there's no multiplication between the two. And so y of t, which we may as well put over here, is equal to 0. So our next case is going to be... Our next case is this one here, where we've dragged our x of t minus tau function across. It's come across here, so t is kind of, if you split this up and you imagine this is the halfway mark, little t is less than big T, and t minus big T, which is the left-hand side, is still less than zero, so there's still going to be no multiplication um, happening here, so this won't add to anything, but this will. And because this is a height of one, all we have to worry about is this bit here, which is good. Because when we do our y of t, we'll balance. so now we know it's going to have to start at 0 because everything before it contributes nothing. And it only goes up to here. We're looking at t as it moves across here when it's less than big T. And since it only adds up to there, it'll come up to t. And so now we have our bounds where t is greater than 0, but it's still less than big T. We're only looking at the part between 0 and T, which is our integral here. X of T minus tau is 1, so we can add that into the integral. And we're just using the formula up here and adding in the values for each case, but we're looking at it graphically. And in this case, the other function here is just going to be T, which we're just going to call tau. Just so when we do the integration, we're not putting a t on a t. Um, but it is just that t function. So if we then 
try to solve this part out, we'll have the integral of tau is going to be 1 half tau squared, because the 1 contributes nothing. And that's going to be between t and 0. So when we substitute the t in for the tau, we get 1 half t squared as our value for y of t here. Okay, so now let's look at our next case, where x of t minus tau has shifted along a little bit more, and this time it's crossed over the 1t position, or the 1 big t position, but it still hasn't reached the 2t big position. So we know t is greater than big t, but it's less than 2t. I really should have given them different names. So, going back to our convolution function, our limits of integration now. We're only concerned with the bit where these two are multiplied here, because everything outside of the one is zero. And when we multiply by zero, we get zero back. So the left-hand bound is this t minus big T, and the upper one is to t. So we're only interested in this part here. And we know x of t minus tau is 1 in that region, and it'll be exactly the same as last time, where we're only looking at this t for the h of tau, and we're just going to call it tau inside the integration, but we know what it is. So when we solve that, we again get 1 half of tau squared, but this time the limits of the integration are a little bit different and we've got t minus big T and t, which when we solve, we get 1 half of t squared minus, and then all this is in brackets, 1 half of t minus big T squared. Now we'll just focus on solving this last bit here. So if we treat this part here, we've got, we can pull a half out of both of these brackets, which will give us a half out here. T squared minus, and then we need to solve this square here. So we've got T squared minus two little t big T plus t squared. And we're going to take away the brackets now and multiply this minus through. So this will become a plus and this will become a minus. Cool. Now we can see these two terms here cancel and we're left with these two. And we might just multiply the half through for the final answer, which will give us t big T minus big T squared on 2. And that's what y of t equals within that region. Okay, so now we're going to look at the next case, is where t is now beyond 2t. It's less than 3t, scaling exaggerated, and t minus big T, which is the left-hand side of the um, x of t minus tau, is less than 2t. So we can say we know that t is greater than 2t, and t is also less than 3t. And we're still only concerned with the bits that multiply. So here our, um, our green function, which is h of tau, is zero outside this range, so that sets a, a um, an upper bound on the integral we have to worry about. So we'll look at y of t, and we know that upper bound is 2t, because everything outside of that multiplies by zero. And the left-hand side, we're only looking down to t minus tau, uh, t minus big t, sorry. And we're still looking at the exact same region we've been looking at the whole time. So, our d tau. So now if we solve this integral using the exact same one we've had the whole time, we'll say it's 1 half 
tau squared between 2t and t minus big T. So here we have 2t squared minus a half t squared, which will give us 3 on 2, or 1 and a half t squared minus t squared on 2 plus t, big T. And that's our function between 2t, oops, and less than 3t. So now we've built up a piecewise function that looks like this. So it's 0 when t is less than 0. It's 1 half t squared between 0 and t. This function between t and 2t, and this function between 2t and 3t. And if we look, the final case will be when t is greater than 3t, and t minus t is greater than 2t. And it's pretty easy to see that that'll be 0 times 0. So we know when t is greater than 3t, y of t equals 0. And so that's our final function in y of t. And now the final step here would be to draw it out on a graph. So we've been working on our red axis, which was tau. And now we can draw this out in terms of t. And looking here, we can see the functions 0 below t equals 0, and 0 after t equals 3t. So we're going to have three distinct regions, so 3t, 2t. So our final function y of t, which we're going to do in yellow here, in the first region between 0 and t, it's 1 half t squared pretty much a parabola. It is a parabola. And we're going to make that parabolize its way up. Um, and it's going to f have a final value here of 1 half t squared, when t, which was here, equals big T. And then we have to shift into the second region, which is going to be this one here. So if we substitute some stuff in here, so let's look at it at t. At t, we've got t times t, which is t squared, minus t squared. So here we're going to have half t squared as the value here, which makes sense, because that's what we're already at, which is good, it's not discontinuous. And at 2t, which is our next, our final point, we're going to have 2t squared minus t squared, or 0.5t squared, which means we're going to end up with 1.5 t squared. So it's going to be greater than what it was, say, let's say up here. All you've got is the formula for a straight line. So this would be m, x, minus or plus c. And it's a straight line between those two points. So we're just going to go up, 2, 3, 1, 2, t squared. And now we're going to look at our final one, which is this one here, and that's a t squared plus a straight line, so it should be a kind of shifted parabola. And now we'll work out what the final value should be. So at 3t, now we've got 3 on 2 t squared minus 3 squared is 9, and that's on 2 t squared plus 3 t squared t squared, so it'll finish off at zero, and it'll do that in a reverse parabola because of this minus term. So it'll kind of like, down to here. So this is linear and straight, parabola, reverse parabola. And that's what our final y of t function will look like. So y of t looks like this big monster beast. And that's been the graphical graphical method um, of convolution. And you can do that with any two functions, and it's the same sort of step. So we work out what our two functions are, which out, work out which one's the easiest to drag, and you can use either of these two formulas. And then as you drag it over, work out what your limits are of t as you go across. And as long as you get those intervals right, you'll be fine. Build up your piecewise function, and then draw it out to see what the final function looks like. 
thanks for watching. And um, if you like the tutorial, don't forget to subscribe. There should be plenty more coming. Thank you. Right.